Brace yourself. Discussing the legacy of Rare on the Nintendo 64 is pretty redundant at this point. I honestly can't say too much more about this that hasn't already been said. Rare just killed it in the 90s. They seemed almost superhuman in their ability to churn out game after game while still innovating and revolutionizing so many different genres. But as we know, every good thing must come to an end, and Rare's swan song for the Nintendo 64 was certainly an unexpected one. Conker's Bad Fur Day was Rare's last title on the Nintendo 64, turning their kid-friendly character Conker the Squirrel into a swearing, alcoholic degenerate, and reimagining a whimsical platformer world into a filthy adult environment. Shocking, controversial, and not safe for work, Conker's Bad Fur Day was the adult alternative game, the lampooning of the very legacy that Rare and their 3D platformer back catalog had established earlier in the decade. My first exposure to Conker's Bad Fur Day was in a copy of Game Informer. I discovered a preview of an adult reimagining of a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed squirrel protagonist. The transition from the old to the new was interesting. The idea of an all-ages aesthetic framing adult subject matter was nuanced at the time, with the success of Comedy Central's South Park being the forerunner of this trend. So seeing this relayed into the video game medium felt new and fresh. I didn't get a chance to actually play Conker's Bad Fur Day until I was in high school, but my initial impressions were... glowing. I could not stop laughing at this game. It was just so outrageous that even angsty, teenage, dyed-his-hair-black Alex was cracking up. In my youth, Conker's Bad Fur Day was incredible. But now I'm in my 20s, and Conker's initial appeal has since weakened. I expect more from my games these days, so I wanted to see what Rare's bizarre project meant for the long haul. But there are some things that I need to confront. I want to know this game's worth. Does studying Conker's Bad Fur Day actually mean anything? Does dissecting its humor and game design actually contribute to a conversation? Ultimately, what value does Conker's Bad Fur Day hold? Humor in video games is not easy to pull off. In fact, humor in general is not easy to pull off. There are so many different styles and methods to make something funny, and with so many preferences scattered across so many different people, there's no single trick to craft a joke. It's meticulous and surprisingly cerebral to make something funny, and it's something that we take for granted in modern day artistic culture. See, humor is, for the most part, absent from the discussion of artistry and media. It always stands in the shadow of its counterpart, drama. Drama, for some unusual reason, is a more universal emotion, at least when it comes to representation in media. I think this is because drama tends to have a stronger connection to artistry. The dramatic nature of films like Titanic, television like Game of Thrones, or games like The Last of Us is really what powers the media's artistic vision. We honor them as icons because they make us emote deeply. We feel the pain that the characters feel, their struggles, their relationships, all powered by storytelling and performances. Art and drama are tied together extremely tightly. Yeah, that's better. Humor is different. Humor is flippant and ridiculous. It's the entire nature of it. It's there to bring us joy, and despite what many might think, the facts are that humor is very underrepresented when discussing the greatest pieces of art in history. Humor is nearly absent in the sphere of artistry. If something is supposed to be funny, it's much more difficult to argue it as a top-shelf artistic artifact. And Conker's Bad Fur Day is no dramatic opus. In fact, it has an even bigger disadvantage than other humor-driven artifacts. Its style of humor is not what many would call high art. It's rich with toilet jokes, characters swear like sailors, there's senseless bloody violence and excess of sexualization in many characters. It's crass and primal. It's a lowest common denominator kind of humor. There's no artistic call to arms that a biting satire would provide. Conker's Bad Fur Day is humor for the sake of humor. And boy, is it brilliant. Conker's Bad Fur Day is still one of the funniest games I've played in my life. I love revisiting it. I love the writing, the vocal performances, the aesthetics. It's all just so damn good at what it wants to do. There are moments so outrageous, so endlessly gross that you can't help but crack a smile. I can name off dozens of moments where Conker's Bad Fur Day made me laugh. It's just that entertaining. 
And yeah, you could cite this to my own personal preferences when it comes to humor, but Conker's Bad Fur Day has appeared on funniest games of all time lists since the game was released. Clearly, it does something that folks find hilarious. But what exactly is it? Understanding humor in video games often spotlights the usual suspects, the games that always come up when this is discussed. I could go on and on about how witty Portal's writing is. The LucasArts games of the 90s and their modern successors in Double Fine's library are also brought up frequently. Throw in the Stanley Parable, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, or almost any modern day Devolver digital game, and you'll realize that funny games are not uncommon today. But looking at all of these games, very few of them share the same kinds of humor. The Stanley Parable is a witty but sarcastic look into video game agency. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon is an indulgent satire of 80s pop culture, and Devolver Digital just unload ridiculous amounts of cartoon violence. There are so many unique directions that humor can take, yet none of these games are like Conker's Bad Fur Day. None. Not in writing, performance, or story. They could not be any more different. Conker's humor casts a wide net. It shifts between the sloppy, filthy toilet humor as seen in the Great Mighty Pooh battle to ultraviolent dismemberment in underwater pipes and high falls, then stretching into explicit satire of films like Saving Private Ryan, The Exorcist, and even The Matrix, which released only two years prior to Conker's Bad Fur Day's release. But it also lampoons game design with context-sensitive pads that are titled exactly what they are, along with rampant fourth wall breaking and constantly changing scenery. The cherry on top is the voice acting, especially when it comes to director Chris Sievers role as Conker. His delivery perfectly fits Conker's role as the anti-hero protagonist, someone who cares more about cash than anyone else's well-being, aside from his girlfriend. The humor of Conker's Bad Fur Day is vast and multifaceted. Beyond the lowbrow nature of its most memorable moments, it's a versatile performance. Everything is lampooned in Conker's Bad Fur Day, even in its most inherent element, its gameplay. Conker's Bad Fur Day notably abandons the collectathon elements that other rare platformers like Banjo Kazooie adopted. In fact, the amount of things to collect in Conker's Bad Fur Day is extremely small. There's anti gravity chocolate that acts as Conker's health, red tails that act as Conker's lives, and stacks of cash. It's easy to notice how differently the game operates, rejecting collectible hunting and instead pushing the player forward with more straight ahead pacing. It's a pretty linear game, and I can definitely appreciate that. But that's really where the simplicity ends, because Conquer as a game entirely is anything but predictable. Conquer's Bad Fur Day is a shapeshifter of design elements. You'll go from platforming, to puzzles, to shooting, to racing, to whatever. In fact, it feels like as much a celebration of Rare's past projects as it is a celebration of Rare's humor. The shooting segments parallel GoldenEye and Jet Force Gemini, the platforming segments nod to Banjo-Kazooie, the puzzle solving to Banjo-Tooie and Donkey Kong 64, these influences are all there. Even the hub world is a bizarre patchwork of enormous beehives, giant dung beetle mounds, and a mechanical war zone entrance. There's no single lane for Conker's Bad Fur Day's design, and it makes for an indecisive, almost schizophrenic kind of experience. The lack of delegation in the hub world alone could fill a textbook for how a game shouldn't be designed. By all means, Conker's Bad Fur Day should never, ever work. But it does. Conker's Bad Fur Day turns its crazy cocktail of game design into something that feels complete and surprisingly welcoming. It's Conker's journey into a strange, surreal place when all he wants to do is find his way home. His simple platforming never evolves beyond the game's introduction, but the developers instead frame the individual challenges with unique settings and contexts to make them feel different. The context-sensitive pads serve the purpose of adding new abilities without implementing them into a more global gameplay framework. Each new ability is self-contained via the individual context-sensitive pads, but thanks to the game's non-sequitur sense of humor, these moments feel as cartoonish as they should be. They're not jarring shifts, they're just Conker being Conker. It's here where Conker fully merges the silliness of its humor with the versatility of its design. Simple tasks that we've seen before in countless other games become new experiences because of how they're framed. The constantly changing environments combine with the surrealism of the humor, allowing Rare to run wild with how they construct the challenges. 
It's scatterbrained beyond belief, but it keeps the player on their toes, always keeping them guessing. I can't help but praise that. Seaver and his team made a game so packed with left turns, but hid it behind poop jokes and swearing. Beyond Conquer's gross humor is a game of endless creativity. You're always delivered something new and different when playing Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and in a culture of empty open worlds and tedious cinematic experiences, Conquer's Adventure feels like a counterculture of sorts. It has the spirit of a niche indie game, one of total creative freedom. It screams pet project, yet Rare encouraged its development even when Nintendo themselves refused to promote it. It remains one of the most personal, distinctive, and unique titles of its era. Conker's Bad Fur Day's value comes from its almost rebellious nature to both design and the humor that frames it. It is so chock full of risks, the kinds of creative decisions that ensured its commercial failure, but put it in a place all its own. I want more games to fool around with player expectations, and I think Conker's Journey is a powerful teaching tool on how to subvert these expectations effectively. It was a gamble for Rare to release this game, and to this day, its commercial failure can't be overlooked. But it has value. Any game of this creative magnitude is destined to have something worth dissecting, and cutting through the grime shows a level of confidence and commitment to a creative vision that many would never accept. Conker's Bad Fur Day is a filthy, disgusting, rude, scandalous, violent, inebriated head trip of a game. But that's what gives it staying power and it's why we're still talking about it to this day.